in Japan, it is often said there is a last security net for women who are poor. Unfortunately, it's not the government welfare system, but the sex industry that will save women in the end. Meshida jokes about Japan. Have you ever heard of Tokyo Poverty Girls or Tokyo Hinkon Joshi? A few years ago, a well-known Japanese business magazine ran a series of articles interviewing women who were living in poverty in Tokyo and revealed the realities of their harsh lives. Currently, the percentage of non-regular employment in Japan is 36.9% and about 40% of Japanese are now in non-regular employment and while the average annual income of regular employees is 5.08 million yen, the average income of non-regular employees is 1.98 million yen. In fact, Japan is now a class society and a society in which regular and non-regular employees' lives are different. However, as a comedian, I can only dream of reaching non-regular employee status. Moreover, women account for about 70% of informal employment, and two out of three female informal workers say they have economic difficulties. And since their income from informal employment alone is not enough, they are forced to moonlight, I mean physical job, say one down with your hands. Like men, when women have low incomes, they do physical work to earn extra income. The major difference is that while men find it easier to find physical labor as full-time employees, women must hide their status and do a different type of physical labor as irregular employees. Moreover, the salary of these female physical laborers is becoming increasingly low. Even though men consider them to be essential workers. Today, I would like to talk about the three main types of poor women introduced in the book version of Tokyo Poverty Women. They are female university students, women in non regular employment, and single mothers. Meshida. Hey guys, it's Meshida. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Finally, my YouTube channel has got 150,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for your support and warm comments. Now, I'm organizing my solo English stand-up comedy show in Tokyo. If you come to Tokyo, please come to my show. And if you are interested in that, please check out the link below. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page. You can watch my stand-up set and special videos. Meshida. The university enrollment rate for Japanese students in 2022 is 56%, which means that more than half of students enroll in college, but 50% or half of all college students owe scholarship money. Half of Japan students are in debt as soon as they enter university, even though they don't learn much during their college years because their parents have low incomes, they have no financial support if they have to pay for their tuition with scholarships and the rest of their living expenses with part-time jobs. They are overwhelmed with part-time jobs and cannot lead a normal student life. The ordinary students who value their student life are more likely to enter the sex industry where job sites claim to offer high incomes. It is also said that many female college students are now earning their living expenses by doing papakatsu or sugar daddy activities. And it is a school loan system that creates the sugar daddy market in Japan. However, since the data generation is also increasingly poor these days, they are no longer able to earn money even though sugar daddy activities. And in Japan, it is said that 60% of Japan's personal financial assets are acquired by the elderly over 60 years of age. So, the sugar daddy market may develop into sugar grand daddy. 
On the other hand, there is an increase in the number of cases where poor male students engage in scams known as black market jobs in order to earn money efficiently. In order to obtain tuition fees, Japanese universities are putting students in debt and pimping out female students as prostitutes and male students as scam artists. The gateway to Japan's underworld is no longer the Yakuza, but the universities. Beshido. It is said that there are two main types of cases in which female university students become prostitutes. The first is that they learn the risks of scholarships during their high school years and avoid using the system by selling their bodies. The scholarship amount that students borrow is 3 to 5 million yen, so in order to reduce their debt, they enter the nightlife world. In Japan, it is often said there is a last security net for women who are poor. Unfortunately, it's not the government welfare system, but the sex industry that will save women in the end. Second, they take advantage of the loan system as their parents or teachers tell them without thinking, and then become confused when they find out the reality after graduation. After the repayment start, they look for a high paying job and sell their bodies in the sex industry and start working as part-time prostitutes. As a result, it is said that the most common age to enter the sex industry is 22 years old. Female students go to college with debt in order to get a good job in the future. After graduating from college, they start working in the sex industry. In a sense, the sex industry is a wonderful safety net. Unlike welfare from the government, it can be accessed immediately with a single email. Currently, 70% of non-regular employees are women, and 2 out of 3 say they are poor. The average annual income of non-regular employees is 1.98 million yen. These women are in a difficult situation to try to survive on their salaries alone. So, in order to make their lives just a little bit richer, some of them work in the sex industry as a second job. However, as a result of excessive demand and many poor women in the sex industry, competition has intensified. As a result, only a few young women are able to make money in the sex industry. It is difficult for these non-regularly employed women to become full-time employees, even in the sex industry. The number of dispatch workers increased in 2004 when a large-scale deregulation of the industry, which had previously restricted the types of businesses that could employ dispatch workers, made it possible to accept dispatch workers in a wide range of fields. This led to an increase in the number of temporary and non-regular workers, especially in a lot of industries where many women work such as care workers, child care workers, and office workers. In addition, many women began to work in the sex industry as a second job. As a result, about half of the sex workers nowadays are moonlighting. Perhaps the aim of the old influential people and the politicians who amended the dispatch worker law was to impoverish women and dispatch them to the sex industry. Beshido. It is said that one out of every three couples in Japan is now divorced. The number of single mothers is increasing. There are two main reasons why single mothers fall into poverty. First, according to a survey by the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, 42% of single mothers work as part-time, temporary, or other non-regular employees. Many of these cases of working as non-regular employees are after marriage in the case of women in Japan. After quitting full-time employment and devoting themselves to housework and child care, they often work as non-regular employees with more flexible hours. As a result, even if they become single mothers after divorce, they are less likely to be hired as full-time employees because 
companies find it difficult for single mothers to work long hours because their children come first in their lives. Japanese companies are losing a great deal of money because they are thinking on the basis of hourly work. Even though single mothers can work much more efficiently than the average male employee, the second reason is that some single mothers do not receive child support. Among single mothers raising children, 56.9% of all single mothers say they have never received child support. Male cats run away after making their babies. Perhaps instead of its anime cat women, Japan should be known for its cat men. In this Japanese society, women's lives change a lot by marriage. Therefore, the choice of a partner is the utmost importance for each woman. The women who got married to men who cannot pay their child support payments after divorce must have chosen love over financial status. Those women who believed in love have become single mothers and poor. So women, when you get married, think about the risk of divorce. Money is the first and foremost priority in a marriage. Remember, love is like soft serve ice cream. It's very sweet but melts away so quickly and the machine is never cleaned. In super-aged Japan, social security benefits are given to the elderly who have no future while those for women and youth who do have a future are being cut. Many women are suffering today, but no one speaks up, they just endure. If this were France, there would be riots. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and please check out my Patreon page too.